In math class, we also deal with lines in the xy plane. So here you see our x-axis and our y-axis, but there's also this line drawn, and we say that this line lies in a certain place, a certain position, and a certain orientation in the xy plane. And here's another xy plane with a line in it. You see the line right here, and that line has a different steepness. And if we have a graph of a line like this with numbers on it, we can calculate the slope of the line. So here's an example. We have a line drawn in the xy plane and we're told to find the slope and here's how we do it. We pick two points on the line. Any two points will work but it makes sense to pick points where if we can find them where the, the line lies right on the grid of our coordinate plane. So that point's easy to identify. x is 1 and y is 1. So you want to pick if you can find points with integer grid points like that, that's good. And here's another one. This, this point is at position x is 2 and y is 3. So we pick two points on the line, and then the slope of the line will always be the rise over the run. So write that down. Slope equals rise over run. So imagine going from left to right. As x increases, we go along the line in this direction. So as x goes over, y goes up. So you can imagine drawing a little triangle right here and looking at the sides. The, the two points you pick on the line, they define your triangle. And we're going to think about this distance and this distance. How, how much up it goes, that's what we call the rise, and how much over it goes, that's what we call the run. In this case, you can see going from this first point to this second point, and always think of the left point as your first one and the right one as your second. The graph goes from left to right. As x goes from, from one point to another, as x increases, the rise, you can see, it goes up 2. So the rise is 2, and the run, in this case, it goes over 1. And you can see that describes this line. For every 2 units that it goes up, it goes over 1. You can make a pattern like that. From You can come way down here at this point down at the bottom, and you can imagine going up 2 and over 1, and up 2 and over 1, and up 2 and over 1. And every time you do that, you end up at a point right on the line. This line has a slope of 2. That means it goes up 2 for every 1 that it goes over. And slope is always rise over run. Here's another example. We want to find the slope of this line. So let's, let's pick two points on the line. This one looks good, and so does this one. And you can see if we're getting from one point to another, we're going to go up 1 and over 3. Or you can think of it as over 3 and up 1. It doesn't matter if you draw a little triangle on this side or on that side. Just make sure you keep this straight. The slope is the rise over the run. And the rise is how far up it goes, in this case it goes up 1, compared to how far over it goes, and it goes over 3. And if I had instead drawn my little triangle down here, I would have a run of 3 and a rise of 1. I would still have the same calculation. The slope in this case we say is 1 -third. That's a number that tells us how steep the line is. So the slope is always calculated as rise over run, and a steeper line always corresponds to a larger number for the slope. In this example, we're told to draw a line through the point 1, 1 with a slope of 3. So we're going to be drawing a line on here, and we know it's going to go through the point 1, 1, so we can plot that point right there. That's the point 1, 1, right there. That's 1 over in the x direction and 1 up in the y direction. And we want it to have a slope of 3. So a slope of 3 means the rise over the run has to be 3. So we're going to go up 3 and over 1. That puts us at this point right there. So our line is going to go through those two points. Now the line really extends infinitely, so we can continue drawing it um, in that direction. And we put arrowheads on it to, to indicate that it goes on forever. Going down on the left, we can draw it accurately by continuing this same slope. 
uh, a rise of 3 and a run of 1 is going to put us at this point right here and at this point. Just continue that same pattern. And your line should look something like that. That's a line through the point 1, 1 with a slope of 3. The slope just tells us how steep it is. Now in math class we usually have x on the horizontal axis like this and y on the vertical axis. And if we move from one point to another like this we have a certain change in x and a certain change in y. And when we say change in we usually indicate that mathematically with the Greek letter delta which looks just like a triangle. This is a letter in the Greek language. It's a capital D in the Greek language, the Greek letter delta. And it commonly means change in in math class. So if you say delta y, that means the change in y. This does not mean, right here, this does not mean delta times y. You need to take this notation as a whole. Delta y means the change in y. And delta x means the change in x. So when we're calculating the rise over the run, the slope of a graph, the slope is always rise over run, and the rise is always going to be the change in y, delta y, and the run is always going to be the change in x, delta x. So in math class, when you have x and y axes, it's very common to refer to the slope as delta y over delta x.